Hello everyone, welcome to the video on anti-malarial drugs. In this video, I will explain malaria life cycle, malaria disease symptoms and anti-malarial drug. This is a picture taken when malaria parasite is inside a red blood cell. This is a red blood cell and malaria parasite will get into red blood cell and cause hemolysis in this way. Now, this is my channel. If you like the video, do subscribe. Getting into the topic, let us see the life cycle of malaria parasite. It starts with an infected mosquito bite, Anopheles mosquito. When that infected mosquito bites, it injects sporozoids into human body. Initially, it is in the blood. From the blood, it gets into liver. In the liver, the infected liver cells, the organism malaria parasite will multiply and develop and from the liver it is released as merozoids. The merozoids again attack red blood cells. Now this cycle is known as a sexual cycle in which the merozoids multiply. When they are multiplying enough number, they will again release into the blood circulation by causing hemolysis. The red blood cells will, will be hemolyzed when this organism is coming out of the red blood cells. It causes certain holes in the RBC and that results in red blood cell death. Now the released one in some of the merozoids can get converted into gametocytes. Again when mosquito bite occurs it causes transmission and it infects another person. So this is what is the life cycle of malaria parasites. You can see there are certain stages. The first stage before getting into the blood is known as pre-erythrocytic stage. That means before getting into the red blood cell, it is in liver. So that is called as pre-erythrocytic stage. Now once it gets into the blood, it is known as erythro, erythrocyte stage. That means it is present in red blood cell. Now one more stage is there, it is known as exoerythrocyte. Exoerythrocyte means some of these are pa parasites, they remain inside this liver. So that is called as exoerythrocyte. They will be lying dormant as such. And after some time they may get activated and that is what causes relapse, relapse of malaria. So that means malarial uh, disease will get cured. But if the organism is present in liver and if it is getting activated, again it causes once again malaria that is called as relapse, malaria relapse. So this is what is the life cycle of malarial parasite. Moving further, see this is what happens when malaria parasites gets, this is a normal red blood cell. When infected RBC with malaria, the malarial parasite will get inside the red blood cell, multiplies and while coming out, it causes hemolysis. One more thing, during this pre-erythrocytic stage, you do not have any symptoms. Even though the organism is there, no symptoms will be seen. Symptoms will come in erythrocyte stage and the symptoms will come when hemolysis has taken place. When red blood cell breakdown occurs, then people will get chills, fever, uh, sweat and all these things. So symptomatic stage is erythrocytic stage. Pre-erythrocyte stage, there won't be any symptoms. Now, various symptoms. High fever, back pain, profuse sweating is there. And then dry cough, muscle weakness, pains will be there. Chills and sweating will be there. Severe headache will be there. Spleen enlargement and nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Blood in stools will be there because of hemolysis. Usually it is, it is considered as hot, cold and wet phases. Hot means when body temperature increases, it is hot, hot phase. And then people will get chills, it is known as cold phase. Wet, profuse sweating will be there. So these are all the main symptoms of malarial disease. Now, based upon the stages, the drugs are used. See, the first pre-erythrocytic stage in that people do not show any symptoms. So drugs used to treat pre-erythrocytic stages are primaquine, pyrimethamine, proguanin, all the three P's. So this is known as casual prophylaxis. Prophylaxis means before getting the symptoms, if you use drugs to treat the disease, it is called prophylaxis. And as I told you in pre-erythrocytic stage, there are no symptoms are there. So the drugs, these drugs are called as casual prophylactic drugs. Now after that, you have erythrocytic stage is there. Now erythrocytic stage, you have symptoms are shown symptoms. So the drugs which are used are considered as clinically cured drugs or suppressive prophylaxis. 
most of the drugs anti malarial category will come here except primaquine all the drugs are there artemisinin etovaquin toquanil chloroquine halofentanyl lumifentanyl meflofentanyl pyrimethamine quinine sulfonamide tetracycline as i told you except primaquine all other drugs are drugs are used to treat erythrocytic stages now after this erythrocytic stage you have exoerythrocytic stage is there as i told you this is for relapse in some of the uh, plasmodium species they they are lying dormantly in liver and after some time they may cause relapse in malarial disease so the drug used to treat is primaquine primaquine is is tissue specific you can see pre erythrocyte means in liver again exoerythrocyte in liver so this drug is very tissue specific and it is used to treat exoerythrocytic or relapsing uh, to cure relapsing malaria so this is called as a radical cure now the next one gametocytic the gametocytes can be killed and this will prevent transmission of malaria again three p's proguanil pyrimethamine primaquine and artemisinin are used so this is the classification go through it again take a screenshot this is a very useful treatment for anti malarial disease now let us see the mechanism of action of every every group chloroquine quinine mefloquine all of them has got similar mechanism of action what happens is when the organism gets into the red blood cell it feeds on hemoglobin it eats hemoglobin and globin is utilized by malaria parasite but heme left as such this heme is highly toxic for malaria so it polymerizes the presence of an enzyme heme polymerase and it makes into hemo joint form now this step is inhibited by chloroquine quinine mefloquine when this step is inhibited hemo joint formation will not be there so heme levels increases and they are toxic to malaria so as such the drug is not killing the increased levels of heme causes toxicity to the organism so this is how chloroquine quinine mefloquine acts they inhibit the formation of hemo joint moving further primaquine primaquine as i told you it is very specific to tissue tissue specific now primaquine converted into electrophiles and it generates reactive oxygen species they are known as rvs reactive oxygen species and they affect the oxygen transport of pro malarial parasite and they cause death of malarial parasite so this is about primaquine now the next class is proguanil pyrimethamine proguanil is a pro drug which is converted to cycloguanil now cycloguanil pyrimethamine both of them they inhibit dihydrofolate reductase of plasmodium not of human beings it is very selective towards plasmodium so both of them are interfering in the folic acid synthesis sulfonamide it is a structural analog of paramino benzoic acid so all these three drugs the job is to inhibit folate formation or which is also known as anti folates anti folates now the next one atovaquan is there atovaquan this is structurally similar to ubiquinone ubiquinone is a mitochondrial membrane protein because of that structural similarity it inhibits mitochondrial mitochondrial membrane potential is changed mitochondrial membrane potential of plasmodium is changed when it is changed the protozoan death will occur so these are all the major mechanisms of action of all these classes one more drug is there that is artemisinin see artemisinin is our fastest acting drug against malaria this is the main stay main course of drugs to treat malaria now these compounds have an endo peroxide bridge so this is endo peroxide bridge inside the ring you have a peroxide group is there that is called as endo peroxide this bridge interacts with heme in the parasite and uh, the iron cleaves this endo peroxide bridge and that releases reactive free radicals and that will damage the parasite membrane and this results in parasite death this is how artemisinin act there are lot of artemisinin are there and uh, world health organization has recommended act artemisinin combination therapy artemisinin are combined with another anti malarials and the combination is used like artemether lumifentanyl artesanate mefloquine dihydro artemisinin piperaquine artesanate amodiaquine artesanate sulfadoxane pyrimethamine all of them are approved by who and the mechanism of action is this one moving further now quinine needs a special mention here because it has got 
highest amount of adverse effects. So it is obtained from cinchona bark, so it has got a specific adverse effect known as cinchonism. Tinnitus means ringing bells in ears, headache, nausea, dizziness, flushing means redness of face and visual disturbances. All of them are considered as cinchonism. The cinchona bark will give certain alkaloids like quinine, quinidine, cinchonine, cinchonidine. All of them will show this cinchonism. Now after that, after prolonged use, visual and auditory abnormalities, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain will occur with quinine. It also causes hematological abnormalities in people with glucose 6-phosphate deficiency. I will explain this in the next slides. It may also cause hypoglycemia, uterine contractions, severe hypotension and QT prolongation is there. Because of these multiple adverse effects, the use of quinine is restricted. Now, some of the important points. See, prolonged use of chloroquine may cause blindness due to retinal damage. So, chloroquine should not be used for a longer time. Now, proguanil is usually given in combination with etoquinone, atovaquone because it potentiates the action of atovaquone. Now, primoquine is contraindicated with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Now, let us understand what is this thing. You know, most of the sulfur drugs, quinine, chloroquine, all of them has got a problem when, when they are used in people with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Let us understand the concept. See, glucose in presence of exokinase is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. Now, glucose 6-phosphate in presence of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is converted to 6-phosphogluconate. This is not the important thing. The important one is the generation. It results in generation of NADPH. Now, this NADPH is utilized to convert generating glutathione. So, glutathione is formed in presence of NADPH. Now, what is the job of glutathione? It reduces free radical toxicity. It is a free radical scavenger. That means it removes all the free radicals from human body and saves the human tissues. So what happens in these people who has got glucose 6-phosphate deficiency, there is less amount of active formation of glutathione. That means free radicals cannot be removed efficiently. Now what is the mechanism of action of primoquine? It is generating radical oxygen species, free radicals. And these radicals in turn attack our own red blood cells. That is the problem. That, that is the reason why it should not be used with used in, in patients with glucose 6-phosphate deficiency. So this is about anti-malarial drugs. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my video, subscribe my video.